you would like to work with such highly professional street maps with a multitude of details and provided with GPS coordinates for correct positioning, then I recommend you Vasco Street Maps from Motion Studios. And in this tutorial, I will show you how both products work together. For this, I have started already Vasco Street Maps. And the first thing we should check in the main settings of the program, uh, you can access them here with this button here on the lower right. We should check the image format for the output of the created map. We would like to, uh, to create a TIFF, a so-called GeoTIFF, that is a normal TIFF bitmap file with additional geographic coordinates or GPS coordinates for correct positioning of the map. So we would like to have a TIFF format instead of JPEG, PNG or one of the other formats. That's all we have to check by the moment. I will create a new project with this button here on the lower left corner. And now Vasco Street Maps takes me directly to the project settings. And the first thing we have to introduce is here the dimensions of our new map. But how many pixels really do we need? Let's jump back to Vasco da Gama and let's have a look. First I will place the side of the map to bird's view and rotate it to north and let's zoom out a little bit. The size of the map we would like to create depends on what we would like to show. This here represents a full HD video screen 1920 by 1080 pixels and if we create the default values of Vasco Street Maps so we can move the map half to the left and half screen to the right because we have 3840 pixels. That may be sufficient but if we have to zoom in a little bit more then the map has to be bigger to cover all the streets that we need on the route we would like to show. Or further, if we would like to view a side view of our map, like this one, the map should be much bigger so that the border of the map here wouldn't be visible or at least only a little bit. So in this case I recommend you to create maps with the maximum values possible. When you start using Vasco Street Maps together with Vasco da Gama, you may have to experiment a little bit with the sides of the maps because you will see the files you create may be really huge and so the guidance would be the map as big as needed and as small as possible to reduce the amount of data. But here you have to experiment a little bit. And because of the side view here I would like to use the maximum values possible here for creating a map in Vasco Street Maps that will be 20,000 pixel and I will introduce them here 20,000 and there's one small detail you have to terminate the introduction of the value with the enter key because otherwise this dialog doesn't capture the newly introduced value and will use the former one. So for the height I will use 12,000 pixel and all the other values of the map background colors and so on, country borders, federal borders and all the other details, I leave them as they are only the maximum details for sm uh, lower resolutions I will turn on and I will accept this with OK. Now we see our world map and we have to select the region of the map we would like to export as a GeoTIFF file. Since I would like to create a city map of Berlin I will set the viewing point 
of Vasco Street Maps to a position from the GPS database with this button here. This works exactly the same as in Vasco da Gama 8. Pressing this button, I will search for Berlin in the GPS database. I will find it here. Accept with OK. And now the map is being created. Since we have defined our map sites with 20,000 by 12,000 pixels and Vasco Street Maps has placed now Berlin directly in the center of our map, the region we would like to export now is exactly defined. And now I will switch here to full screen and now Vasco Street Maps calculates the map we would export and this takes a little moment we will skip this process okay Vasco Street Maps has finished calculating the map and we are really zoomed in into the map and we can move here with this scroll bars here on the bottom and on the right we can scroll through our map and now we are at the point that we could save our map to a TIFF file on our disk we do this with this button here, Save Current Map. And I've created a directory for Vasco Street Maps. And here I will introduce the file name for our new map and click Save. I really did it before, so the map already is created. And be aware that this file will be very huge. It will take nearly one gigabyte of space exactly 928 megabytes and if we would have selected a dimension of 20,000 by 20,000 pixel the file would be one and a half gigabyte. So this file later on we will import in Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama will create then its own cache files. After the import process we can archive this TIFF file to an external disk for example just in case that we will need it later on if we uh, have to reinstall the map in Vasco da Gama or uh, some situation like this. But right now no more explanation. This file is already saved so I could cancel this process here in this moment. Before we switch to Vasco da Gama, let's have a look at the files that Vasco Street Maps has created. The first file here is the Berlin TIFF. This contains the real TIFF file, the real map, together with the GPS coordinates. And you can open it in every image editor and you can edit this map further. But maybe if you save the TIFF file again from your image editing program the GPS coordinates will get lost. For this reason Vasco Street Maps has saved a second file, an XML file with the same base name as the Berlin TIFF and this XML file contains two the GPS coordinates in case the coordinates stored in the original TIFF file will get lost. This is very cool because Vasco da Gama in the import process looks for the coordinates in the TIFF file and if it can't find the coordinates here it will look for an XML file of the same name and if it finds this file it will get the coordinates from here. This is very cool and now let's switch to Vasco da Gama and import the map. I have still open my project file in Vasco da Gama but without any additional maps and here you can see the buildings that I have imported and placed on the map in Vasco da Gama and now I will go to the map section and here in this section here for additional maps I can import a new map. Now I will select our Berlin TIFF file I will open it and now I see here as a confirmation the path of our TIFF file in the Windows directory. Here I can see where Vasco da Gama stores the cache files. 
I will leave this untouched and here the third line contains the name of the map for the selection list in, and I can edit it in case that I don't like it. Normally Vasco da Gama chooses the name of the file which in this case is OK and I will select OK. Now Vasco da Gama informs us that it has located GPS coordinates in the file and if we select yes it will place without any further questions the map directly on its correct position but we won't have any chance to select one of the additional options and f this is the reason why I'm choosing no to process this file manually. In this section now I have to place the map on its correct position but since the file contains geographical coordinates Vasco da Gama has done this already and for this reason we can't see the map here because it's so small here but the coordinates here are correct and the only thing that is really interesting is now this function of alpha edge because I would like to turn it on so that it looks very much better and here I will turn it on and the alpha area is set to 20% I will leave it at, as is and now I will accept this settings with OK and now Vasco da Gama processes the map to create the cache files. This takes a moment and we will skip this process. The calculation of the cache data has finished. This import process you have to do only once and from this point on we can turn the map on here as map 1, 2 or 3. I will select it here and if I accept with OK this map of Berlin will be placed on top of the base map classic set in this example here and will be instantly visible. Now it appears and this is the proof that working with GPS coordinates really works. You can see that the map is placed correctly and the buildings on top are in correct place and here on the top you can see the soft alpha edge and for this reason I have done the import process manually to be able to turn this option on. And you can see this is really fun working with this type of maps in Vasco da Gama 8.